Greetings, everybody. Christopher Wayne here with Jeremiah School Vlogication. Just wanted to run through a couple of videos here, talk a little bit about epigenetics and DNA analysis. Before I begin, just want to let everyone know this is not medical advice. We're not giving advice. This is our opinions over years and years of uh, reading, studying. We know what works, what doesn't work, at least with our kids. We'll be talking a little bit today about epigenetics, DNA analysis, and the recent breakthroughs in technology in this field. It's become so affordable to have a DNA analysis run. It's imperative for everyone's health. Our DNA determines a blueprint for our health. And we're talking a couple of hundred dollars you can have this test run. There's a few companies around that will actually run these DNA analysis via a home kit. Basically, you sign up, they send you the kit. If you actually look in the uh, channel below, you can find our video on how to. We actually use 23andMe.com. Find the video below, it tells you exactly how to do it. Let's talk a little bit about the Human Genome Project. April 25th, 1953, scientists found the double helix, which is basically our DNA. And they began to map this DNA. And throughout this process, they created a project called the Human Genome Project. They wrapped this project up in about April, April 14, 2003. They ended up mapping out 20 to 25,000 genes that make up the human body. The, basically, these genes are the blueprints to our health. So what exactly does DNA analysis tell us about our health? Well, a person's DNA, which is dioxyribonucleic acid determines how the body processes proteins, amino acids, vitamins, minerals, etc. It also determines how the body handles environmental toxins around us, especially in this day and age of all the stuff we have in this world that is environmentally toxic. Our bodies have to be able to get rid of that. Our DNA determines how we can do that. It also determines what illnesses we're prone to. What our DNA is, our genetic makeup is constructed, tells us what we're prone to later in life, possibly younger in life. Uh, illnesses like heart and pulmonary disease, strokes, Alzheimer's, autism, things that have been on the rise for decades. Now we have a blueprint, costs less than $200. Takes a little study to figure it out, but worth it. Absolutely worth it. All right, moving on to the methylation cycle. Methylation cycle is the foundation of our biology and its operation determines a resistance or susceptibility to environmental toxins and microbes. It's also responsible for how the body utilizes these vitamins, aminos, enzymes, proteins. It controls our neurotransmitters in our brain, such as neuroepinephrine, dopamine, serotonin, so these DNA mutations determine how this methylation cycle operates. If you end up having a DNA mutation, it throws off this methylation cycle, which in turn creates problems in your body. Bottom line, methylation cycle is not operating correctly. It affects our health negatively. The good news is, with a correct combination of amino acids, vitamins, avoiding certain foods, the methylation cycle can be manipulated to function properly. This is amazing. We've seen this with our own autistic kid. I'll get more into that here in a few minutes. What kind of illnesses, what kind of issues do gene mutations cause? Pretty much everything, really, if you want to get down to the science. But there's actually a number of factors when dealing with multiple gene mutations. If you have one or two gene mutations, it's a little easier to deal with. If you have multiple gene mutations, it gets a little more difficult because they all interact with each other. Because within this methylation cycle, there's processes going on all the time. Tons of processes. Long cycles, short cycles, shortcuts within those cycles. Any particular gene mutation can affect a cycle or multiple cycles at the same time within your body. These gene mutations cause the cycle to work faster, slower, not at all. So once you get this DNA analysis run, find out what these things are doing. And pretty much it tells you. As you research this, it'll tell you what 
vitamins or what minerals or what amino acids you need to get that methylation cycle running properly again. So I said I was going to talk a little bit about our kiddo with autism, our little genetic mutant ninja. About nine, ten years ago, we started down this road of autism. Uh, he was diagnosed about eight months into life, and he was running along just fine. Everything was going great, and then all of a sudden he regressed. I have some uh, ideas of why that happened, but I won't get into those right now. I can say during that t this time, over the past nine years, we've tried almost everything you can possibly try. Uh, we, we tried traditional medicine, which was an absolute disaster. Uh, nothing worked with traditional medicine. Every single drug they gave him was horrible. Um, There's a couple of them that looked like they were going to work for a couple of days and everything was going along and two days later it just fell apart and wheels came off. But we've also tried homeopathy, chiropractic, dosos, we did biofeedback, we use herbs, minerals, vitamins, enzymes, gone to counseling, read tons and tons of books, uh, went to behavioral therapy. Uh, we did a host of protocols over the years trying to get this kid recovered. And all these little things we did, I mean, they made progress. We'd see little gains here and there, and oh, that worked, oh, this didn't work, but nothing just miraculous. Until ended up getting our own DNA analysis run. And then everything fell into place. It was amazing. Um, between DNA analysis, epigenetics, and NutriVal tests, NutriEval, uh, which I'll talk about NutriEval in another video, um, these three things made it all the difference in the world. This is when we saw things changing with our kiddo. Um, everything fell into place. Everything made sense. We, could, you know, we understood now why certain foods he ate would set him off and how it affected his moods, what vitamins would set him off, and why some days were better than others. You know, it never made sense, and now it does. As soon as we got this DNA analysis, you could look at this and see, oh, this mutation does this if he eats these foods, if, if he has this vitamin, it'll do this to you. So, and it's fairly easy. I mean, it, it seems like it's very complicated, but it's really not once you take it step by step and learn what you're doing with it. It's amazing. It's amazing. So, you know, after, I, we probably ran along seven years or so before we ever stumbled across this genetic testing. And what we found out was our kiddos got 11 genetic mutations just kind of blew us away. We didn't quite know what to do with it at the time, but we started researching and looking at it. And then about that same time, we ended up finding a doctor around the Dallas, Texas area that understood this genetic mutations. So we took our analysis along with us for an appointment. He looked at it and went, oh yeah, I get this. So he also ran a couple of the tests, like I was talking about the uh, NutriVal test. He ran some... Uh, gluten and casein tests and basically our child tested positive for gluten casein he can't eat gluten or casein which we had tried years ago took him off gluten casein that's one of those ones that we saw some good changes but it didn't last it didn't seem to make it you know it, it was okay but it wasn't great but it was just the one thing we did at that time uh, so we you know he's also low when, when we run we find out through this nutri eval test that he's low in lysine he's low in methionine he's low in tryptophan he needed some fish oils um, which support the brain uh, all these things put together he ended up having what, what did i say 11 g mutations mthfr com t cbs vdr tac and there's a ton more of them within that list but each one tells us something about his methylation cycle and what's not working. So this, my friends, is the autism puzzle. A lot of people will try this. No, that didn't work. And they try this. No, that looked okay, but it didn't work great. And, you know, they just kind of trudge along. Well, when you get these tests done, everything falls into place. As soon as we started supplementing with these particular amino acids, you know, we did kind of did one thing at a time with this doctor. We'd start with uh, 
some amino acids and he had to have an L-carnitine. Um, so we did the L-carnitine and went along with that for a couple of weeks and things. Oh, hey, that's making a difference. It looks good. And then we start in on the amino acids the doctor gave. Oh, hey, that looks pretty good. He's getting better and better, but then there'd be a bad day or something. Oh, something's happening. He's having a meltdown. What, what's going on? So we, okay, we're going to go back to taking away the, uh, or going back on a casein-free, gluten-free diet. Bam, that, that helped. Every step of the way, everything's helping. It, it's actually pretty amazing. This is the puzzle everybody talks about. They say autism's a puzzle. Well, this is it. It's all related to our genes. It's all related to these methylation cycles that are not running properly. You supplement it with the right thing. You take out the right foods. Get away from things like for our child, he's got the MTHFR. Most people don't realize in this day and time, everything that we eat is fortified and enriched. And what does that mean? That means they've added B vitamins, B12. You can't go buy a loaf of bread at the store that's not enriched. You can't hardly go get milk that's not enriched. If it says fortified or enriched, that means they've added B vitamins. Well, what do B vitamins do to a person? It gives you energy. It, it speeds you up. Well, think about that. We eat it all day long. We're eating and eating and eating bread and milk and everything's got B vitamins. And everybody runs around and wonders why they have anxiety and have to take medication for anxiety. Well, there's a possibility right there. Maybe you don't need B vitamins. B12 is the one they're putting in enriched wheat and enriched milk and everything else. So moving on, you know, you could talk about, let's look at some examples of what else these gene mutations cause. Now, I've talked a little bit about the autism spectrum disorder. You know, within that, they have the uh, DSM-5, which covers, you know, it, it depends on the diagnosis. They'll call it autism. They'll call it Asperger's. They'll call it pdd -NOS. These are all just diagnostics from within this DSM-5 manual they have that covers the autism spectrum disorder, ASD. Frankly, I think it's all the same. It's just which piece of this methylation cycle is not working right and it creates different behaviors different moods they don't have speech maybe they're hyper maybe they have adhd all these things are affected by this methylation cycle let's look at a couple of these examples of say the mthfr one which i mentioned a while ago this gene mutation is commonly associated with pdd nos which is pervasive development disorder not otherwise specified doctor terms for we don't know so you know with, with a mthfr mutation it's pretty straightforward really unless you have some other mutations in there that can throw off what you take but if you have just the mthfr basically you avoid folate you avoid enriched foods you avoid b12 vitamins because your body can't break them down in this methyl cycle it can't process it it just it it creates toxic waste in your body basically because you can't process this B12. So you avoid all that and most people can take what they call a methyl B12 which is an active form of B12 which is already active for the body. It doesn't have to process it into what's usable. It's already usable by the body. And you can go on to other things that these DNA analysis tell us in our gene mutations. So let's look at uh, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. There's some things out there linking these together too. I'm sure we're going to see more and more of these mutations popping up as far as what the list is that they can look at and what causes what. But at this point, we've seen some of the COMT, BDRTAT genes creating some problems with people with Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. They're kind of relating, relating those to that because they regulate norepinephrine and dopamine in the brain. BDRTAT's basically your vitamin D receptor. So you can't process vitamin D properly if you have a mutation within this. And as you learn this, you'll, you'll find out that, you know, there's a mutation that's half, half bad. And then there's other mutations. I'm trying to put this in layman's term, that there'll be mutations that are half bad and mutations that are completely bad. So it might be running at a certain you know, it's still running the, the process in the methyl cycle. It's just not running it at full steam. It might be running at 80% or 50%, depending on how this mutation is acting. 
So anyway, we can move on. We'll just look at heart disease. Same thing with it, MTHFR. We've seen a lot of that related to heart disease. You can't process B12 in your body. Your body needs B12 to detoxify. It, if you're lacking this MTHFR, if you have this MTHR mutation, and you can't process B12 vitamin, B12 and folate is what cleans your body out. And you need that. So it can create problems in your system. The point, all this is to say, if you're working with an autistic child or someone with heart disease, cancer, MS, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, genes play a role in all this. And you can't fix these problems without the entire picture. And I just don't understand why the medical community doesn't rally around this. But as we all know, it takes them about 20 years to catch up. To me, I can't stress enough how important it is to go out and get these DNA tests, especially you guys work with autistic kids. It's simple. You get the test run, it's you basically spit in a cup, seal it up, send it back to and wait for your results. And once you get the results, you can start seeing these things that are happening and you can go, ah, I get it. I understand he's got COMT and COMT does this and wow. Oh, he's got MTHFR and MTHFR does this. And I get it. I understand why it's happening. And you start supplementing with these aminos and these vitamins and minerals and things. You see amazing stuff. We, in the past year, have seen our kid, year to two years, have seen our kid absolutely turn around. And this is a kid, and I hate to say it, but this is a kid that we thought he was going to end up in an institution. It's horrible. It's horrible, especially when they started putting him on Medicaid uh, prescription drugs. It was awful. It just got worse and worse. They didn't fix anything. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you take this to heart. Run with it. Go out there and get it. It's cheap. It's super cheap. For the rest of your life, you get these DNA analysis done, and you will have this information for the rest of your life. Not only for your kids, We've done it on our whole family. We all know so that if you have certain gene mutations, you know later in life you're susceptible to this or you're susceptible to that. And you know what vitamins and minerals to start taking to get your processes running the way they should. You guys have a great day. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the rest of our channel below. We're going to have a ton more videos coming out. You guys hang in there. Take care.